Well, today we have Dr. Pranav and he's practicing in Nasik, Maharashtra. We're going to be covering the topic of kidney stone management, OAB and BPS all together. So, the very welcome, sir. Thank you. The very first question which I would be asking you is why do you think the number of cases when it comes to kidney stone is on a higher rise these days? That is because of climatic changes actually, day by day. Uh, in general, uh, in general, the climate in uh, India, especially in the South Pacific region, is getting hotter and hotter. Uh, thereby, it is promoting more amount of uh, like dehydration cases, and uh, uh, thereby the climatic conditions are such that it uh, it is favoring crystallization inside the kidney, thereby leading to the formation of more and more uh, uh, stone cases. So that is what one of the foremost reason that the stones are increasing. And secondly, uh, because of more amount of investigation, the more and more cases are uh, coming down to the, uh, um, are being, uh, are getting acknowledged. So there is increasing awareness which is happening, which earlier it was not there. Well, what has been the most challenging case of kidney stone you have ever dealt with and how did you remove the patient's stone? That was a very large tagon stone actually. It was being uh, deferred by many uh, uh, surgeons previously because it was found to be difficult to be tackled endoscopically. So we have actually, I, I have dealt that patient uh, in a systematic form, format and in a, in a single stage it was removed endoscopically because I've remembered that case it was, a, a, even for me I, I felt it to be a, a, a challenging case to go, to go ahead with uh, but then uh, it was possible to take it out in a single stage. Mm -hmm. So that was actually uh, it, was, success, huh, it, it was a great success actually on personal front also. Wow, right, wonderful. What in your experience when we talk about what precaution a person, a patient can effectively take in order to avoid having a kidney stone or if a person already had one in order to avoid the recurrent uh, stone forming? See, there are many dietary precautions that one is supposed to take amongst that actually the most common precaution that he is supposed to take is to include his to increase his fluid intake mm -hmm. uh, as much as possible at least two to three fold and uh, the second precaution that he is supposed to take is to reduce his salt intake uh, thirdly I would say if the patient has already undergone stone surgery or uh, has already been diagnosed and treated for stone disease prior then in that case he is supposed to scan his kidneys every say four to six monthly afterward so as to detect the stone at the earliest possible level the stones which are detected at a smaller size are easier to treat. Yeah. So right. thereby he can prevent further surgeries for stone as such. Yes. Well, when, uh, now I will request you to kindly talk something about OAB. Can you please describe for the audience viewing this that what is an OAB and how uh, the patient uh, can know that I might be having an OAB and how does it impact the quality of life of the patient? Uh, see, overactivity basically uh, it's a it's a clinical condition wherein the patient experiences is a, a sudden urge in the urination which uh, which he or she finds it difficult to defer. Such patients would often experience a sudden uh, desire to go and void which they are not able to control thereby in certain patients they would leak out even before reaching the urinal. So such patients basically uh, uh, they are supposed to go and uh, visit their concerned urologist this, these conditions are very effectively manageable by medications and uh, that can avoid a great uh, deal of toil to the patient. Well, I would request you to kindly put some light on uh, the behavioral therapy when it comes to the treatment of overactive blood. Uh, sorry, can you repeat? Uh, uh, when I would request you to kindly mm -hmm. put some light on the role of behavioral therapy mm -hmm. when it comes to the patient of OAB. Yeah. See, these patients are basically advocated to restrict their fluid intake. Uh, especially if possible to less than 2 liters a day mm -hmm. that can go to a great extent in reducing the frequency. Thirdly, uh, secondly, these patients are taught how to do Kegel's maneuver. Yeah. So by doing uh, quick, flick, uh, quick flick exercises and by effectively learning these techniques, they can uh, uh, greatly reduce their urge in passing urine. Thirdly, there are certain dietary precautions which having explained to the patient if those are being followed by the patient that can also go a long way in reducing their uh, over activity. So right. these are the basic behavioral uh, uh, maneuvers by which patients can themselves uh, like produce significant difference in the 
symptomatology as far as OEB is concerned. True. Well, uh, now I would request you to kindly talk a little bit about BPH as well. Then what are the complications a person can develop if BPH is not diagnosed at an early stage? Can you also share a few instances where you have came across during your practice that may help in educating our viewers? Uh, BPH, if like, let's say if it is, uh, if the patient is, uh, is having severe amount of uh, 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 BPH, which is causing like pressure on the kidneys, if not well treated, can lead to uh, uh, kidney damage in a longer run. Also, if these patients are maintaining significant amount of residue at the end of the uh, urination, these patients are having the increased risk of getting recurrent inf infections. And in case of the prostatomegaly is very very significant, these patients can have recurrent episodes of hematuria, that is blood in the urine, over a long, long period of time. Well, in BPH, when does the surgery become a, a necessity? And are there any uh, uh, are there any possibility to make it avoided when it comes to BPH? Yes. See, the absolute con uh, indications for surgical interventions in BPH is like absolute retention. Yeah. If the patient is not able to void only. And such patient, they would most likely would require surgical interventions. And then there, there, there are certain complications if that happens in the scenario of BPH and per, uh, per virtue if those could be allotted to the BPH only, like if there is kidney damage or if there are formation of secondary stones because of BPH, then it mounts a absolute indication for surgical interventions. And as far as prevention is concerned, uh, see, uh, earlier in the uh, course of the BPH, if these patients are effectively managed through medical uh, therapy, then one can uh, prevent such complications, uh, then uh, adequate surveillance of these patients can tell us whether, whether the complications are happening or not. Thereby, that can lead to early detection and prevention of such complications in future. Wonderful. That was very informative having you on board with us. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being Thank here. You. Thank you. So Thank you.